Brothers, I need to tell you this. Never marry for where you are, marry for where you are going to. Because that's most times it's the problem. A lot of men outgrow their wives. Marry for where you are going. Marry up. I'll let you think about that. Marry up. Always marry for where you're going because when you get to that place, you want someone that looks like where you're going to. And so, <laughs> I went, so one day, after all of this had happened, Pasquia and I had become friends and all that, so all this while we're friends, but nothing. I didn't see him like that. Like I said, I had friends zoned him and I was just trusting God for where God was taking me to next and who it would be. But I didn't put pressure. I didn't start threatening God that, see, if I don't marry by December 31st, you will see my true colors. You don't, you don't know me. I will backslide. You don't know me. 48 hours prayer. I will even do two minutes prayer. You are joking with me. I didn't threaten God. I didn't say anything. I was just loving the Lord. Because I know that all things work together for my good. I'm sure that the plans he has for me, they are plans of good and not of evil. He has plans to prosper me. And to bring me to the end that I expect. So I knew, like I knew my name, that God was going to take care of me. So I didn't panic. Was I getting younger? No, but I didn't panic. And so, one day, I couldn't go to my church, because I wasn't attending his church. And so I couldn't go to my church, and I just decided to visit his church for the first time. And so I got to his church, and after he finished preaching, so apparently, you know, when pastor is here, he can see everyone. So for those of you that think pastor can see, he's seeing you. So when you're looking at your phone, prophet is seeing you. And so... After the service, he said to me, I'll take you home, but I need you to wait for me. I have a few meetings. And I said, no, fine, that's fine. So I sat, and I was, you know, I, just, I was just reading, flipping through my Bible, and I was reading my Bible. And I just felt this very strong presence of God again. And I knew it was those kind of conversations. And so I just opened my heart up, and I said, Holy Spirit, whatever it is you want to do. So I was reading where Samuel came to anoint the next king. And so he got to Jesse's house, and he asked Jesse to bring out his sons, and Jesse brought out Eliab. And the first thing that Samuel did, the prophet himself, the great prophet, saw Eliab and said, surely this is the anointed of the Lord. And the Lord said, no, I don't see the way men see. I don't look on the outward, I look at the heart. And so that was the first thing God started to do. He wanted to correct my mindset. All these things you are looking at, he must be tall, he must be dark, he must be handsome. So who marries short? I'm just saying. And we know a lot of amazing men who are not too tall. And so God started addressing and started correcting my mindset. The most important factor in picking a spouse is the heart. The heart of the matter is always a matter of the heart. It's always about the heart first. And so God said, if the person's heart is right, that's who I want for you. But I didn't think much of it and I continued reading. And they brought out all the brothers, and there was no one. And then eventually, Samuel says, do you have any other son? And they say, yeah, there remaineth one. But he's the youngest, and he's taking care of the sheep. And then when they brought him, he said, arise, anoint him.